good evening students how are you all hope you all are doing fine and i'm so glad that you are so well uh, attentive while watching the videos of physics chemistry and other subjects and you are dedicatedly doing your homework however give me some time i'll finish my correction slowly one by one and i'll send it to you now students today is friday and today is our biology day and as i promised last week that i will today teach you about cells i will tell you about cells you see how interesting cell this lesson is okay so let's start with our so students today our lesson is the cell this is chapter number 3 in your ratna sagar book now <coughs> we will learn various things about cells let us see what are we going to learn in this lesson we would include cell its introduction and its definition how was cell discovered parts of cells both plant and animal cells remember plant cells and animal cells they are different in various aspects then we will uh, read about the structure and functions of cell organelles and then the difference between plant and animal cell so these are the things your chapter includes chapter 3 of your ratna sagar book now what is a cell now you have seen probably masons they build house masons what who are masons masons are misty masons they build house or a building when they build the house first thing they use is the bricks they collect the bricks they put one brick and then they put the second brick and so on so the entire structure of the building starts with one brick two bricks and so on innumerable number of bricks similarly cells are like bricks bricks are used to build the house cells are used to build a body of a living thing whether it be plant or animal and remember one thing as the building of bricks building of a uh, uh, you know building a house or a building starts with one single brick it starts with one single brick similarly <clears throat> building a our body or body of a living thing starts with one single cell so this is the similarity between building a building by a mason and building of our body or any living things body of a of any living things so let's see what could be the definition of cells you see the human body is built with the cells these are the red blood corpuscles or you know uh, cells of the blood this is the picture of cells of blood 
these are red, red blood cells clear so let's see what could be the definition of the cell cell is defined as the structural and functional unit of our body it is the structural and functional unit of the body if you have got one marks you write till here if you have got two marks or more for definition only then add a few more points a cell can exist independently as i said the life starts with a single cell when we were like uh, we started we was we were not even born we just started a human body just started it was just a single cell right so it started from single cell then it did not require any other cells okay so it can exist independently all right on its own and and how why can it independently exist it can independently exist because it has the capability capability to perform all the life processes all the life processes what are the different life processes examples of life processes example of life processes are like here we have got digestive system then we have got respiratory system then we have got reproductive system then we have got excretory system circulatory system skeletal system so you know these uh, i would say these are the systems and the processes conducted by these systems like digestion is a life process respiration is a life process excretion is a life process reproduction is a life process so these are the examples of life processes so now you see the definition of a cell the structural and functional unit of our body is known as cell okay see it is it is the structural unit like bricks it is the structural unit of our body our body the body of a living thing starts life of a living thing starts with a single cell and there are many cells added up to this that single cell to you know as we grow in size as we grow in age the cells keep on adding up like the as the building is built and it grows in height it is raised in height we add more bricks similarly as we grow as we grow older and in size the cells keeps keeps on adding so like the bricks are the block a uh, building block of um the building or the structural unit of building cells are also the structural unit of our body and it is also the functional unit what are the functions various functions our body pro, uh, processes or does life processes like digestion respiration excretion cells are capable independently they can exist remember again they can independently exist and also this independent unit is capable of uh, you know carrying on with the all the life processes
like respiration digestion reproduction uh, excretion and various other okay so hope you have understood the definition of cells next you see here i have gone a little wrong uh yes you can say life process this is also a part of life process you know it's not wrong it's part of life process you can say of plants this is what i wanted to add of plants life process of plant not only life processes of human it is capable of carrying on, uh, uh, out the life processes of plants like a single cell in a plant is capable of carrying uh, carrying on the life processes like like the cells at the tip of the cells at the tip of the root here the cells which are here at the tip of the root they are what they helps in absorbing water and minerals from the soil next we know about chlorophyll i'll write it with green chlorophyll the cell of a chlorophyll is known as chloroplast a cell of a chlorophyll is known as chloroplast 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 is the cell that exists in uh, in the surface of the green plant uh, leaves chloroplast exists in the on uh, you know in the green leaves that helps in carrying on with the process of photosynthesis so chloroplast uh, carries on the process of photosynthesis and what is a chloroplast chloroplast is the cell that that you know chlorophyll is the part of that cell the green color of the leaves are because of the existence of chloroplast cells on the surface of the green leaves then you have got the cells of our muscles cells of our muscle or our muscle cells helps in doing what helps in moving they have the capability they gives the uh, the muscles of our body the cells uh, in the uh, in our muscles present in our muscles helps the muscles to contract and relax contract and relax and when they contract and relax students we are able to move hence the cells present in the muscles help in moving how they because the cells here helps in contraction and relaxation of the muscles okay so these are the few things that the uh, cells are capable of doing it is it that's why we call it a as a functional unit of our body it's the structural unit because it, it our life starts from single cell 
and the functional unit because it helps in doing various processes like processes got it next as i said before cells can exist they are capable of existing independently our life starts with independent cell our life starts with independent cell one single cell it and this on its own and why are they capable of surviving on their own because they help in carrying out various life processes like moving digestion respiration in case of plants absorption of water and minerals then uh, uh, photosynthesis so these this is why we say cells are capable of its uh, independent existence that is in existing on its own and carrying on on or perform all the life processes and hence since this is the reason why we call them the building blocks building blocks of life so you might get the this as a as name the following building block of life so the answer is cell and students these cells which you are seeing seeing here these cells which you are able to see here they are you would not be able to see them with your naked eye it is not possible to see the, them you know you just take a drop of blood and you will see the blood like this with all these beautiful platelets and you know uh, small cubical things over here or circular spherical i would say not cubical spherical things in the blood no you cannot see the cells with naked eye cells are very minute cells are minute units minute units minute means very small and it is so small that you cannot see it with naked eyes cannot see it with naked eye then how do you see uh cells to see cells you need a microscope where micro this word micro i've gone wrong here a little bit spelling yeah this word micro means minute micro means minute and scope means seeing or visualizing so to visualize to see micro things minute things which you cannot see without your naked with your naked eye that those things we try to see it through the instrument or device called microscope okay now the we will move on to the next part of the lesson that is how microscope was this uh, sorry how cells were discovered how cells were discovered so our next topic is discovery of cells first cells were discovered or cells could i would say you 
as I said, you cannot see the cells with, with your naked eye. So first cell could be seen through an instrument called a simple microscope. Through an instrument called a simple microscope. This is also known as Leeuwenhoek's microscope. And how did it look? See, it looked like this. It had a, had a sample translator here, focus knob here through which you could see. And then your sample holder means the, suppose a red blood cell you have taken here. It's, it's here it holds. And then the lens through which you could see the lens you see here through which you could see the cells now you would be amazed to see the real size of a simple microscope see this is the real size of a simple microscope so this is the picture of a simple microscope this is the real size here it is appearing to be a big machine but it is not a big machine How, rather it's a small instrument which could uh, have fit here in the palm and who discovered this simple microscope? Anton van Leeuwenhoek. This is the person. You see here in the picture I have given Anton van Leeuwenhoek. And here you see how Leeuwenhoek is using his my simple microscope. So this is the picture of Anton van Leeuwenhoek with his simple microscope. You please pause the video and see how he is seeing the cells or how he is using the simple microscope. How small it is. Now, this man, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, he was born in 1632 and died in 1723. And he was the one who developed the simple microscope. And this simple microscope is made up of single lens. You see, it, there, it has got one single lens. So, the microscope that is made up of single lens is the simple microscope or single lens microscope. And what was the use of this microscope or how invention of sing single lens microscope that is simple microscope helped the Dutch scientist. Okay, he, he was a Dutch person, okay, De from uh, Norway. Okay, he was a person from Denmark, Dutch. So, how did it, it help this Dutch scientist? Anton van Leeuwenhoek using this microscope using it you know simple microscope helped him in various ways so let's see the uses how it helped Le Leeuwen uh, van Anton van Leeuwenhoek this was the first use what was the first use? Yes. As you have uh, made idea, this microscope was used by 
live in hawk to see to see blood cells blood cells in capillary what is what are capillaries capillaries are the small veins thin small veins capillaries of the webbed foot frogs of a frog from here from here this portion these portion somewhere he took the sample of the blood and he studied it under the simple microscope studied under the simple microscope he invented so this was the first use to see blood cells in capillaries of the web foot of a frog next it also helped him to observe tiny single celled organisms in a drop of water you see the picture over here you see the picture over here how this these organisms you see here this is one this is one this is one how these organisms are present in water when you see this portion of water it is clear water however when you see it through the simple microscope you can see clearly the presence of these organisms these are called single celled organisms and leven hock was the person who proved that these organisms these single celled organisms were these single celled organisms were living were living they were living things how these single cell organisms were living things so it was levenhock who studied sorry the spelling is wrong liu wen hock he was the first person to study the microorganisms the single celled organism under his simple microscope and not only that he told that these living organisms were living organisms okay however he never called these organisms these small uh, you know the things which he observed under the microscope he never named them as cell he was not the person who coined the term cell he did not call them cells no then who called them cells who called them cells this is the person who called these small units which we cannot see with our naked eye that are capable of existing independently and carrying on all the right processes in our life which is considered to be the building block and the of our life 
which is considered to be the structural and functional unit of our life he was the person who termed it as cell robert hook coined the name cells he was the person and how when was this scientist born he was born in 1635 and was living till 1703 and our anton van leeuwenhoek was a dutch scientist however robert hook was an english scientist he was an english person of england english scientist and what instrument did he use he used compound instrument microscope so it was who invented compound microscope robert he was the person who made the compound microscope and how was compound microscope different from simple microscope simple microscope was single lens and compound microscope has two lens you see here one water lens and here one to see the specimen there is one one lens okay so this is what was invented by robert hook now you see robert hook is sitting over here with his instrument with his instrument compound microscope okay and how did he study this uh, cells to study cells he used the cork cork he used cork and what are corks where do you get corks corks are the are available from the bark of a tree so he took the cork from the bark of a tree and studied it under the compound microscope and studied it under the compound microscope and what did he see by studying it under the compound microscope by studying under the compound microscope he saw this this cork actually is made up of this small box like structure small box like structure and the word cell came from the latin word cellula and what does cellula means small compartment you see these each small boxes are considered as small compartments by seeing this structure of small boxes robert hook coined the term cell okay and what did he study he studied the cork from the bark of a tree however the cork is the dead cell dead cell though once it was living once it was living but the cork itself is a dead cell so 
Robert Hooke actually observed what? What did Robert Hooke actually observe? Robert Hooke observed the dead cells under the compound microscope. Okay, he observed the dead cells under the compound microscope. Now, let me show you the present day compound microscope and simple microscope. How they look. Nowadays, these type of, this is compound microscope and this is simple microscope. Simple microscope you will see in your school laboratory when you grow up and go to biology lab. And compound microscopes are there in science labs of colleges, universities or higher uh, level. Okay. So these are the two present days. In present days laboratory you will find this. These type of compound and simple microscopes. Okay. Now students, why a cell is called the basic unit of life? Why is cell the basic unit of life? Why? Number one because it is the structural and functional unit of life. I told you what are structural, structural unit, functional, functional units. Okay? Structural and functional, functional units of life. Next, they are capable of existing independently. They are capable of in, in, independent existence. Okay? And they are the when they are existing independently they will have to do all the life processes if they do not if they fail to do one life process they will die like if our kidney does not work we will die if our uh, digestive system does not work after a few days we will die so similarly if the cells are capable of existing independently then they are capable of performing they are capable of performing all essential functions of life that are you know useful for survival okay and one more thing you will have to remember they are they 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 can survive exist independently they can do the functions of life processes by themselves very good they are the structural unit functional unit that doesn't mean they are huge one they are sm very small units which we cannot see without our naked eye without sorry cannot see by naked eye and to visualize it to see it what do we need we need a capable powerful microscope 
we need a powerful microscope for that so it is you know it, it is a big thing right structural and functional and unit of light which is capable of existing alone single and perform all the life processes like big things digestion excretion expiration moving everything but that doesn't mean they are big one they are very small in size and so small that you cannot see it with can, cannot see it with naked eye you need a powerful microscope to see it another what is the starting of life i said the life of all organisms all human beings animals dogs trees everything all starts with life starts with single cell what is it called you know it is called zygote zygote single cell zygote but every cell has a but every cell has a life span if they are not nourished if they are not protected if they are not given proper nourishment they will die and even they are provided with nourishment after living for certain time we all die cells die similarly plants also die animals also die so all cells have a life span and this is also capable of forming new cells it is capable of forming new cells when the old cells worn out they are capable of you know uh, throwing away the old cells worn out cells and form the new cells that's why it is considered to be the unit of life basic unit of life all right so the main three points why it is called the basic unit of life these are the three points structural and functional unit of life and they can exist independently and perform all essential uh, functions of survival and if they have, if you have more marks like 4 5 6 then you add these three points last three points okay and one more thing students remember all cells join not all cells cells join together to form tissues okay so from cells we get tissues they form you know go together they cluster together to form tissues from tissues together forms the organs organs okay i will not say organ system because all organs together forms organ system not tissues together so from cells you get tissues and from tissues join together to form organs like heart lungs hands etc etc so hopefully you have understood the introduction part of the cell definition of cell why cell is called the structural unit why cell is called the functional unit you have understood the simple microscope you have under, uh, learned about 
Anton van Leeuwenhoek, whatever is required for you for your uh, examina examination purpose. You have learned about uh, Anton van Leeuwenhoek. You have seen his creation, simple microscope, first simple microscope, which looks, looks like a huge machine, but actually it is a simple small machine. And what? how did this machine help Anton van Leeuwenhoek? First, it helped him to study the red blood cells from the capillaries of the webbed foot of a frog. Next, it helped, it helped him to observe the microorganisms present in water or the tiny single cell one one cell organisms present in water which is however otherwise appears to be a clear water and then it helped we have learned about robert hook that he coined the term cells first cells were discovered by uh, anton van leeuwenhoek however the term the name cells came uh, give was given by robert hook how did he do that? He discovered this machine, a compound microscope with two lenses. And under that he studied cork that he took got from the bark of a tree. And cork once was a living thing, but when they become cork, they become dead. So when he observed under a microscope, he saw this small box-like structures. So since it was box like box like structure or cell like structure that's why he named it a cell which came from the latin word cellula it came from the latin word cellula cellula means small compartment so according to this we can say that he studied the dead cells he studied dead cells under microscope next we move on to the present day compound and simple microscope how they look and then why cell is considered to be the basic unit of life the five six points we have learned okay and also we have learned that cells join together to form tissues tissues many tissues join together to form organs okay so that's it for the day solve the um, questions and question answers i have given do the drawing which i have given you have to learn however however uh, figure 3.1 and 3.3 that is diagram of a single symbol microscope and compound microscope please ask your ma'am whether you need to practice or not okay because they are difficult diagram during our time we never did the diagram of a simple microscope and a com compound microscope now it depends on your teacher whether she asks you to practice it or not and also i have given you a project it is a project where you need a printout of a, a picture. So I have given the details in your uh, questions which I am sending. Please solve it. Do the project and send it to me. Send it to me by tonight and project by tomorrow evening. Thank you. That's it for the day. Study page now uh, first two pages of this lesson and then try to solve the answers okay and send it to me take care stay safe stay home and study well bye bye